Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. And for today's video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at one of my selected lectures from my best selling 10 and a half hour introduction to information security management course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, we're going to take a look at the seven step incident response process. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So you'll notice that we have an arrow and we show the steps in order. What I want to do is talk about each one, one by one. So the first step is detection. So detection, well, like its name implies, it's detecting that an incident has occurred. An example of this would be an alert from an intrusion prevention system or an intrusion detection system. It could be a user calling into our help desk and saying that an incident has occurred as well. So this is all a part of the initial detection, letting us know that we need to respond to a potential incident. After we've been identified that an incident has occurred, the next step is the response. So this is gonna be the initial response from our incident response team. If we have one, and if we don't have an incident response team, the appropriate person, whether it be assistance administrator, whether it be a network support person, or a help desk person and so forth. So it's gonna be that initial response from that response team. Then we move on to step three, which is mitigation. And we really shouldn't call this mitigation, but a lot of people put this in the order of calling it mitigation when it's really containment. So step three is containment, and this is where the damage is contained so it doesn't spread to others. And so let's give this an example scenario. Let's say that we have a department, let's say the sales department, and an email has spread through that department, and everybody within that department's opened up that email, and it includes a virus and every single system in that department is now infected with a virus so we've been alerted that everybody has a virus our incident response team has responded and in step three we want to contain that virus so it doesn't spread to others on the network so we want to make sure that we follow steps to make sure that we contain it only to those systems in that sales department and doesn't spread to systems in other departments within our organization. Once we've done that initial containment, so we make sure that it doesn't spread, then we move to step four, which is called reporting. And again, this is a bit of a misnomer as well, because it's not reporting in the sense that we're reporting out on what's taken place so far. Reporting should actually start at the beginning with the detection. So when the initial person um, gets a call or they get an alert from an IPS or IDS, they need to start recording that into some sort of a tracking system. The reporting in step four is we're reporting it to the appropriate personnel specifically the appropriate stakeholders, because at this point in time, we have a good idea of what the incident is and what type and effect it's going to have on the organization, whether it's going to have a low effect or a very high effect on the organization is going to be very least fairly significant. So we want to make sure that we report to the appropriate stakeholders. This would be our managers, our C-level executives. And if we think that a pr crime has occurred, we want to make sure that law enforcement is brought into the fold as well. So maybe they are reported to, we're reporting a crime to them and they're going to come in and they want to pull their digital evidence, their forensics evidence as well. So that's what reporting is at step four. Once we've done that reporting, then we move to step five, which is the recovery. And before I talk about step five, you're going to notice that step six is remediation. And so these two things, let me just put a box around both of them. These are different. They serve different purposes. So when we talk about recovery, we're talking about the systems that are affected. We want to make sure that we recover them back to their last good known state. So for example, we want to make sure that that virus that's infected all those systems on the sales department, that it's off of those systems and we reverted all those systems back to their last good known state where they're no longer infected with that virus. Once we've done that and we know that all the systems in that department are in a good working order, then we move to remediation. 
And remediation is where we're actually looking at the root cause of that incident and figuring out how that occurred, figuring out how that virus got all the way into our network onto our end user client systems. How did it bypass all of our security measures on our firewalls, our IDSs, our IPSs, our email servers and on our client systems. We wanna see what the root cause of that was and we want to address that to make sure that this virus doesn't get onto any other systems on our network in the future. So that's what remediation is. It's the bigger picture. It's remediating the larger issue of that virus actually making it onto the systems, whereas recovery is recovering just those individual systems. And then lastly is step seven, is lessons learned. So once we've recovered all those systems and we remediated the root cause of that issue, then we want to write up a lessons learned report and we want to have some discussions. We want to have discussions amongst ourselves and management to talk about how we dealt with this incident and how we could potentially improve our response in the future. And so that's what lessons learned is. And that's our seven step incident response process. So if you have any questions about this, I know this was just a very high level overview, um, but if you have any questions, please let me know. If you're confused by these different steps, I'd be happy to discuss further. But if not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.